Morning, Mike. Hey, how are you? What's happening, man? Uh, just had to download a quick app. I'm learning <laughs> something new every day. There you go. Who says you can't te- teach an old dog new tricks? Uh, exactly, exactly. <laughs> you know. So tell us about the game last night, St. Augustine at uh, Millville. That was a really big test for St. Augustine to see if they're kind of still the top dogs in that Cal American. They answer the bell, come out and get a win over the Thunderbolts. Yeah, I mean, both teams come in last night uh, tied for the uh, division lead in that Cape Atlantic League American division, and and St. Augustine really dominated the game from the start. Uh, As I wrote in the Press of Atlantic City today and on PressofAC.com, they did it inside and out. Uh, Andrew Delaney had a big game. Charles Solomon with 18 points and a spectacular dunk. Cole Vanderslice hit some key threes. And really, St. Augustine kind of, uh, you know, you kind of judge St. Augustine by a different level. They had lost back-to-back games earlier this month to Morristown and Wildwood Catholic. Created some doubts about them. But since then, they've won three in a row and a big win last night over Millville. <laughs> sort of restores some St. Augustine's credibility and kind of really establishes uh, establishes them as the number two team in the uh, Cape Atlantic League right now behind Wildwood Catholic. Yeah, I was talking to uh, Coach Rodeo earlier this month before the uh, shoot-down cancer classic, and, and he was saying, hey, we got the talent. It's all there. It's just a matter of putting it together and getting some consistency. So it looks like they're starting to at least get down that road where they can be consistent. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And, uh, you know, really uh, a, a big game last night from Andrew Delaney, a senior who had, who had transferred in from Blair. I think he had 15 points and eight or nine rebounds last night. He was really a force inside. He's six foot seven, and he talked about after the game maybe becoming more of an inside presence and maybe he had a tendency to play too much on the perimeter early in the season. And last night he went inside and really, he really controlled the boards in the second quarter when St. Augustine made its big, uh, its big run and really built its lead. Mike, what do you think of Millville? I mean, this is a team that had won about eight in a row before last night and, and, are making some noise as maybe one of those teams that can contend for a Cape Atlantic League tournament title uh, along with the the likes of Wildwood Catholic, St. Augustine, uh, St. Joe's. So there's going to be some real pretty good competition once we get to that tournament. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Millville last night, I mean, uh, just never really found a rhythm offensively. They really struggled from the start. Uh, St. Augustine played a triangle and two defense that seemed to throw Millville a little early. St. Augustine's size bothered Millville. You know, Rhino Lawrence ended up with 21 points. He's now six points away from becoming Millville's all-time leading scorer. However, uh, they just never really found that Eddie Jamison, who had been playing very well and shooting the ball very well, never really got on track. So I think you got to give Millville a little mulligan last night. Uh, you know, they've still got a win over St. Joe. They're still right there, you know, uh, for a in contention to get a home game in the first round of the Cape Atlantic League tournaments. I would still classify them as a, uh, a group four contender. You know, their only losses, they're 11 and three, and two of the three losses are to Camden and St. Augustine. So that's not bad. So I think, you know, let's give Millville a little bit of a mulligan last night and, and see how they bounce back from, uh, from yesterday's defeat. Mike, what do you make of uh, St. Joseph? Obviously, uh, Paul Rodeo Jr. coaches that squad. He, he kind of has the same demeanor as his old man. They're, they're very uh, intense guys when it comes to basketball. And uh, he, he was telling me at the Seagull, you know, he wasn't happy with the way they played there. And he said, hey, we can easily be 8-5, and five, you know, go from 7-0 and oh to 8-5 and five real quick if these guys don't get it together. And, and I think they got the message a little bit. They've been playing some better basketball. Very talented team. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if they can start to start to really put it all together here at the end of January. Well, a big week for them this week. They've got a game Wednesday night against Pleasantville. A uh, big game for them, Cape Atlantic League United Division game. Just kind of see who's going to be that team that's going to challenge Wildwood Catholic over the second half of the season. Of course, Wildwood Catholic goes up to Hamilton uh, this Wednesday or this past Wednesday. <laughs> Wildwood Catholic shoots poorly from the foul line. St. Joe takes advantage. They've got a two-point lead. With, uh, with time running out, uh, however, they can't hold it. The game goes to overtime, and Wildwood Catholic wins. I think Marcellus Ross, 34 points in that game, really played well. I think St. Joe is kind of a team that's on the verge of, of doing something big. They're just looking for that win, that, that one win to kind of put them over the top. They almost got it against Wildwood Catholic. We'll see if they can get it this Wednesday against Pleasantville. 
Talking with Mike McGarry from the Press of Atlantic City. And, Mike, we just had uh, Coach Bruno on from Ocean City. I know you've, you've covered uh, most of his career. He's been at, at Ocean City for about 30 years now. And uh, talk about him a little bit. He just reached 400 wins and really one of, one of those great high school coaches that, you know, it's not all about wins and losses with a guy like that. He, he makes such an impact on, on generations of players and, and families. And that's one of the neat things about high school sports. You can have these coaches who are there for a long time and, and really make a, a huge impact on, on people's lives. Yeah, I mean, he's he's been there uh, at, at Ocean City for such a long time. And uh, a guy who's really kind of passionate about the sport. I think I wrote in the column I wrote about him that ran on Friday's paper. You can still get it online. You know, two days after Christmas, he's down at the Boardwalk Basketball Classic watching an afternoon of games. Uh, you know, he takes uh, he and his family decide to take a little mini fall vacation for the first time. They drive to Florida to watch Villanova play basketball. So uh, <laughs> basketball is in his blood. It's in, It's in his life. And he's a guy who's kind of devoted to the sport, devoted to Ocean City program, uh, and, and has done a great job over the years. You know, sometimes, you know, he's coached some good teams. He's coached some uh, mediocre teams. He's coached some sub-500 teams, and he keeps coming back. You know, it's easy sometimes to, to coach 30 years if you, if you got 900 wins and 100 losses. He's, he's got, you know, he's had run the gamut there at a public school in Ocean City and, and, and done a great job, and it still shows no signs of uh, – of slowing down he you know he he said people tell him that he'll know when it's time to retire and uh he doesn't know it's time yet so he's still going strong and right now ocean city's nine and two and uh you know right now right a contender in that cape atlantic league national division along with uh you know lower cape may mainland and, and holy spirit mike uh real quick before i let you go turn it to the girl side uh who can really compete with Mainland? I mean, they're such a tough matchup with Kylie Watson and the shooters they have on the outside. Uh, is there a particular team off the top of your head that can maybe give this team a run in the, in the Cal tournament coming up? I mean, you look at Wildwood Catholic. They've had a great season so far. ACIT is undefeated. Uh, they have some tall girls that are, that are young players that can maybe uh, give some problems to the inside game of Mainland. Yeah, I mean, obviously the first answer that comes right to your head, and I better say this, is Ocean City or Paul Belushi <laughs> will yell at me next time I see him. Yep. I mean, Ocean City and Mainland played once this year. Mainland kind of dominated the game for three quarters. Ocean City came back. The teams play again next Sunday uh, in, in, in a big game uh, or a week from today or a week from tomorrow in uh, Tom Williams' ESPN shootout at Ocean City. The other team I think you got to keep an eye on is Atlantic City. I think athletically Atlantic City can play with anybody in South Jersey. Atlantic City, of course, has a big game this Tuesday. They, I believe they travel to take on an undefeated ACIT in a game that will kind of determine first place in that CAL American division. So I think that's a couple of teams right there, uh, you know, that are, can, can kind of challenge mainland, and, and we'll see how that unfolds as the season progresses. Great stuff, as always, Mike. We appreciate the time. We'll let you get back to your uh, weekend activities and uh, catch up with you next week. Uh, obviously, a lot of basketball going to be – needed to talk about next week and, and the next couple of weeks as we kind of hone in on this Cape Atlantic League tournament and who's going to make it. Yeah, absolutely, Sully. I got a new app on my phone now. I'm ready to go. Bouncing <laughs> my step for the rest of the day. Thanks to you guys. Uh, <laughs> thanks for having me on. We'll talk to you later. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it, bud. Uh, all right. See you later. Bye-bye.